Bitcoin itself has to survive that shakeout. And we're in the middle of that right now. It's always very volatile. Hello everyone, pseudonymous analyst Plan B reacts to the latest Bitcoin price action and shares his updated analysis. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Start with the first chart, stock to flow. And now forget everything you know about stock to flow. Just look at the chart and see what it tells you. On the x-axis, there's the date from 2010 to today, 2024. On the y-axis, there's the price of Bitcoin and note it's on log scale. It's a logarithmic scale. So for example, this is 100, but this is 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. The lines get closer and closer. And all these steps are a factor of 10. 10 times 100 is 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million. And why do we use the log axis uh, and the log scale? Because we can see long-term trends way better. We can see the, we're interested as investors in returns. So in this 10x every cycle, for example. And, and not in the actual level that's 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 not important it's about the returns so this gives us a very nice view of the returns and uh, if you don't do it you'll see that everything before let's say 2017 becomes a flat line here on the bottom and then it seems like all the action is in the end of the time series which is not true as you can see from here anyway so price is here and then there's a third dimension it's the color and Color here is months until the next halving. So it's just a timer um, from well, uh, 48 or a little less than 48 months, four years, uh, until the next halving. And it counts down until zero, the month of the, hal of the halving, and that's blue. So we go from red to blue, from red to blue. Why do we do it? Because it gives uh, some situational awareness. For example, um, the green which is 15 months until the next halving. Usually, that's a bear market. 15 months before a halving is usually a bear market. But you can easily see where that 15 months is. So you can compare from cycle to cycle within the time series because of that third dimension. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's three lines in the, in the chart. There is a price chart. That's the colored dots with this. Uh, color overlay over it then there's the model in the gray line and there's the error of the model that's basically the difference between the model and the actual price um, yeah so the stock to flow model is basically just a fit through the data points and normally you would see a straight line fit which would be a log linear straight line model then i didn't use that you also see this very nice smooth uh, curved lines which on log log would be a straight line which, which is a power law for example those are also nice but my eye caught something different and that's why i use this step function here i noticed that all the increase in the bitcoin price is basically after a halving so um, when blue turns to red, that's when you see the jump in price. Blue to red, jump in price, and then it levels off. Here the same thing, puff, and then it levels off. Um, so I modeled the stock to flow ratio, which doubles every halving, every four years. So the first halving was here in 2012. That was an official halving. The second one was in 2016, we had one in 2020, and recently this year in 2024. There's one unofficial halving. It's not a real halving um, in that the, uh, the block reward uh, changed, but 
the stock to flow ratio changed very rapidly in this first couple of years which were crucial to the existence of bitcoin and this is where the stock to flow ratio flipped from or doubled actually from two to four and then from four to eight in this real halving but it it actually had a unofficial halving in 2010 11. so that's basically what it says then the error a lot of questions about that basically i wanted to put all the information in one sheet without using too much too much access so one i wanted to use this axis one is when the model is exactly right and the same as the model price so for example this this period here this bear market in 2015 was exactly on this this gray model line and then the error here is one bitcoin is above the model line it goes above the one so this would mean it's two times above the model three times four times above the model and the same if you look at if the if the bitcoin price is below the model value it's it, it's below one the error and for example here um and and then it grows to the model line here and then it's one again so that's the error and uh, so there's a lot of misunderstandings, by the way, about the stock to flow model. I wanted to talk about some of it, some of them. Uh, one min misunderstanding is that this model failed because it didn't reach 100,000 here in 2021. And um, well, I'm a little bit to blame for that myself because I have tweeted once that, well, if, if, the, if Bitcoin doesn't reach 100,000, then the model failed. Uh, which was um, <laughs> actually not not true if if, if you think uh, think about it it's more what I meant with that and I'll, I'll, I'll explain it with the error here you see that sometimes the the Bitcoin price is is around the model line exactly around it like in the beginning sometimes the price is above the model line like in this period and in this period so my expectation for the last period, the 2021 or the 2020 to 2024 period was that we, that Bitcoin would reach the model price, which it did actually, right? It, it reached this, this 50,000 multiple times, but normally it, and, and, and it has been below the model, of course, in the beginning, just after the halving and later in the bear market, but I really did expect and i would expect again if we were in 2020 that bitcoin would overshoot the model line also and it would overshoot it by a factor two which we have seen in almost every previous uh, in, in all previous periods actually so it's not a um weird thing to expect that bitcoin reaches uh, reached the, the hundred thousand last cycle but it didn't <laughs> And in, in fact, it spent most of its time below uh, the model line, which was a first, uh, but not, not weird. Now, most people, because of recency bias too, most people think that this cycle will be below the model line again. And that's, that's very understandable. However, um, it's, it, it, there's as much chance that the model will be above the model line again and uh, like like this period or this period and in that case i mean the model line for next period is 500,000 right that's that's about the the level that that we expect and then normally we would go 2x over that or and and 2x below that so that's 1 million or 250k so that would be the normal range uh, around this model line, the beginning of bull market. Uh, the other interesting thing is that the short-term realized price acts as a support line in bull markets. So we have dips in bull markets. A usual bull market can have minus 20%, minus 30% dips. We just had one here. But usually it, it doesn't go really far below the five-month realized price. So that's 
that's very interesting to see. It happens every bull market that we stay more or less above this short-term Hotler five-month realized uh, price. Very useful. Second on-chain chart is the realized return. Those are the people that sold in a month. So last dot here is the July sellers and uh, they got 15% return. That's green, 15%. It's not much for Bitcoiners. It's a lot for traditional investors, especially if you make that in a month. But still, it's, it's profit, so it's good. I mean, um, blue, that would worry me a little bit. And red is what I expect in a bull market, so that's probably what's, what's coming next. Uh, well, not, not really more about the realized return than Bitcoin in profit. We know from all the Bitcoins, when they are bought, and most are bought below this level of 64,000, so they're all in profit. In fact, 92% of all the Bitcoins, 92% is in profit right now, and only 8%, so those are the people that bought at everything above 64, 8% of all the Bitcoins is in loss. Uh, so it, in total, there's not much loss, not much fear in the market, which is good. Now, the bonus chart. And it's a new chart. I never talk about this chart. I tweeted it on X uh, last week, and it got a lot of uh, questions and, 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 and likes. So I included it here. It's Bitcoin minor revenue, revenue and it's very um, interesting at the moment. At the moment, So what we see is the blocks on the x-axis. Every 210,000 blocks, uh, we have a halving. So there's a block every 10 minutes, 210,000 10 minute periods is, is, is four year. Uh, so every four year, there is a halving. We just had one in uh, April. And what happens at a halving is that uh, miners uh, revenue halves as well, because they mine the new Bitcoins. Uh, and this is only new Bitcoins, by the way. It's not the fees, which is a small part of their revenue. So it's the, it's the new Bitcoins that they mint. Um, but after a halving, they get half of those new Bitcoins and their, their revenue drops uh, overnight, which is horrible for any business to be in. Um, and they have to recover from that. So usually what happens uh, is that the uh, small miners that have all the equipment, inefficient equipment, uh, usually uses a lot of electricity, and also that have high electricity uh, prices, they can't mine at a profit anymore so they drop out they, they just quit they're, they're, they're running at a loss so they, they have to quit and the new miners the, the miners with new equipment the latest and greatest in hardware very efficient and lowest prices maybe free energy prices those are the ones that can still produce at a profit those will survive so this shakeout every halving is a, a very important event uh, a, a Bitcoin specific structural event that happens every four years and the, the entire Bitcoin market Bitcoin itself has to survive that shakeout and we're in the middle of that right now it's always very volatile um, hash rate drops everybody's talking about minor capitulation and that, that the miners will just quit which never happened by the way it's just FUD but what's important is that uh, this industry is growing a lot. So in the beginning, a monthly revenue was only about a million for all the miners in the world. Right now, we're talking over $1 billion every month in revenue for Bitcoin miners. And at the peak, it was $2 billion. Uh, so that halved to just under $1 billion. And what we see now is very interesting. The only way... Uh, for miners to recover, for, for mining revenue to recover, which it always did, is for Bitcoin price to double. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Plan B. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.